again, and welcome to Hot Takes. Thanks so always to my patrons making these episodes possible. Now, I love adaptions, and frankly, that's more controversial to say than it should be. For you see... There's been something of a trend in the manga, comic, and so on communities to start obsessing over changes made to series when, say, adapted to animation, or remade, or into movies. This isn't inherently a bad thing, but I think it makes some fatal errors. Firstly, by conflating accuracy to the source material for inherent quality, and secondly, neglecting the realities of adaption in the first place. This attitude causes people to get upset over manga panels not being adapted perfectly. But other variants have also seen large swathes of people turn on formerly beloved series like the original Sailor Moon anime and the brilliant Fullmetal Alchemist 03, or otherwise act dismissively regarding quality series like the original Hunter x Hunter adaption. Of course, something doesn't need to be better than its original work to qualify for being welcomed as an adaption, but I wanted to highlight how damaging this attitude can be. As an aside, the obsession on panel-to-panel -panel translation is also why, despite loving Way of the House Husband, I find the anime meh. The four coma humour doesn't always adapt well to the new mediums, and the efforts to recreate the panels in animation often made it feel stiff. But let's look at the title piece for this video, Nimona. If you're watching my material, you probably already know about Nimona, but... In a medieval futuristic kingdom, the citizens are protected by the Institute for Elite Knights, giant walls, and cannons against monsters. For the first time in the Institute's thousand-year history, a commoner by the name of Ballister is being made a knight, only for him to seemingly kill the queen and become a wanted criminal. He meets a shape-changing child who wants him to embrace his role as a villain while he tries to clear his name while being pursued by his boyfriend Ambrosius. The movie is amazing and I highly recommend it. I only wish that I could use more clips from it in this video, but you know how copyright is. The movie is also based on a comic by the amazing N.G. Stevenson, but the two stories have a lot of differences. Despite this, many comic fans like the movie, and even most critics have don't have the kind of toxic vibes I mentioned above, but some of the latter's complaints did inspire this episode. So what did the film change? 1. Ballister in the comics had been a wanted criminal for some time before meeting Nimona, and had embraced his role as a villain and was something of a mastermind. Ballister in the film has only just been framed in the last 24 hours, wants to redeem his name, and while both very smart and skilled, is extremely sweet and soft. 2. Ambrosius intentionally cut off Ballister's arm in the comics, and the two had a very drawn-out, we're-still-in-love, divorced, enemies-to-lovers thing going on. Ambrosius in the film cut off Ballister's arm purely on instinct, because that's how they were trained, and was extremely torn up about it. 3. Nimona is the only, finger quotes, monster in the world, and has a rather ill-defined origin and nature. Nimona in the comics had a much more elaborate backstory, and there were other non-humans like goblins around. Fourth and finally, the main villain, the head of the Institute, was a conventionally attractive human woman and zealot. In the comics, she was a goblin in disguise and revealed to not meet Western conventional beauty standards. So why were these changes necessary? Well, for both 1 and 2, it's because the film would not have been able to cover such a vast stretch of time or such a complicated and messy relationship, not without cutting out so much more, making something comparatively incoherent, or otherwise shortchanging the topics and characters. This is a problem even the best of adaptions struggle with when it comes to film, because they have much more limited runtimes and structures compared to comics and books. Gimli, son of Gloin, you were done so dirty. As for the latter two changes, they were also necessary to serve the themes of the story and current social commentary. Having the giant walls, the knights, the cannons all exist just to harm one child whose only crime is being different is extremely pertinent right now, and far more on theme for the story's messages. Similarly, having the director actually be someone who is part of the systemic hatred, a normal, finger quotes, good person, rather than a designed to be unappealing outsider taking advantage of it, this also aligns better. Plus, as noted above, drawn out and complicated stuff doesn't work as well for singular movies. There were other changes, but most can be tied back to these points. There was also the lighter, kiddified tone, but keeping the target audience in mind and the headspace of the creator being different are both perfectly valid reasons to change these elements, I would think. As it is, the reality of adaption is that things are going to be different, it's in the name, and I think that's generally for the best. I can understand maybe wanting the same thing but with shinier art, but generally speaking, the original's not going anywhere, and seeing a new spin on an old favourite, be it from the original creator or someone new, can add so much, let alone the realities of adapting something to a new medium, be it animation or game or something else. There's a reason the covers of songs by different artists and different genres are so popular, and I think that mindset is the best one with which to approach adaptions. Not to say drawing a line of comparison regarding certain points is invalid, but you can do that with other mediums and series as well, as this very episode has shown. Anyway, yeah, go watch Nimona if you can, it's great. If you would like to support my work, please check out my Patreon for scripts and early releases, and if you would like to commission some 3D art, please hit up my coffee. Thanks for stopping by.